Alright, what's up guys? Today we're doing a video on how to do with Windows 10 and Debian 8.6. So first of all, what you want to do is open up your web browser and go to debian.org and then you want to download the Debian image which you want to install. So we'll click on Getting Debian and then on the left here you'll see down Downloading an Installation Image. And you can choose from a smaller installation image uh, if your internet's slower um, and you just want to get the installation started. Or you can download a larger uh, image with more packages and stuff. Um, the size of CDs and DVDs. So it's quicker once the install gets going, but it's slower to download initially. Um, so what you want to do is you want to click on the one you want. For example, you might want to click on the small or the more complete one. Um, and for small, you want, you, you'll just simply you're going to click one of these, which correlates to what uh, platform you're using. For example, if you're using 64-bit, uh, you want to click on AMD64. And if you're using 32-bit, you want to click on this one here, i386. However, if you're downloading um, on a CD or DVD image, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. You want to click on download CD images from HTTP or FTP and click on that. And then you want to go to the stable release. And then down here, same story. You just want to click on the architecture you want to use. For example, you might want to use AMD64 CD image. And once you do that, um, for CD images, you want to download the CD1.ISO. And for DVD images, you want to download the DVD1.ISO. And then you'll be done and head over to this site, which I'll be linking in the description, and scroll down until you find option 2, which is here, and download the turn off fast startup bat. This will disable fast startup, which is necessary if you want to dual boot well, Windows with Linux. Simply open up the folder where it's downloaded, right click it, press run administrator, hit yes, and it will run and it's done. After that, what you want to do is create a bootable USB stick. And to do this, you can either follow my tutorial uh, if you don't know how to already, and I'll show you how to create a bootable USB, USB stick using Rufus. Uh, or if you already know, you can just skip ahead and do it yourself. Uh, I'll put an annotation on the screen now if you're on desktop, or a link in the description if you're on mobile, so you can click that and watch that if you need to. All right, so once you've done that, next thing you want to do is open up the start menu in Windows 10 and type in diskmgmt.msc. And then once disk management loads, you'll be greeted with a screen looking similar to this. What you want to look for is your C drive, which is where your Windows will usually be installed. And we're going to shrink it down so we have more room to install Debian on, um, which is what you need to do, do if you're dual booting uh, two operating systems at once. So what you want to do is click on your C drive and right click and press shrink volume. All right, and after it finishes querying the disk space, you'll be brought a box like this, which says shrink C. And you'll have to enter in the amount of space to shrink it by in megabytes. So say, for example, we wanted a 15 gig install drive, uh, to in like 15 gigs to install Debian on. We will type in uh, 15, 000, so 15,000, right? Because a megabyte is a thousand times smaller, roughly, than a gigabyte. A good way to work this out is to simply take the amount of gigabytes you want, times it by a thousand, and that's how many megabytes you need to put in this box. After you've worked it out, simply press shrink down here, and it will begin to shrink the partition. After it finishes, you have an area of unallocated space in your hard drive, and that means it's completed successfully. Simply close out of disk management, and this is the point where you're going to want to plug in your USB, your bootable USB stick into your computer, so you can boot from it next time your computer turns on. This is probably one of the most difficult parts of the, of the entire installation, because you have to get your computer to actually boot from the memory stick rather than the hard drive. Usually you can change it in your BIOS if you know how to do that, however it's different for every single computer, so you'll probably have to look for your motherboard's manual or your computer manufacturer's manual to see how you do it. And then after you've done that, you just simply want to restart your computer, and I'll be back when we've booted into Debian. All right, so if it all went to plan, you'll be greeted by this screen, which means you've booted off of your memory stick into Debian successfully. Next thing you want to do is use the arrow keys and the end key to go through these menus. So you'll want to use the arrow keys to select graphical install and press enter. And then once that loads, you'll be asked what language you want to use. So choose your language from the list. I'm going to use English and hit continue. Choose your uh, location. I'm going to choose the United Kingdom from that's because where I'm from. And then choose your uh, keyboard layout. I'm going to use British English. Hit continue. Wait for it to uh, load all the components from the CD, or rather USB in our case. And then it will go and configure the network. All right, and then you'll be asked the host name for your computer. This is simply like a word or a name just to give your computer the network so you know what device it is. I'm going to simply call mine uh, dual boot, but you can call it anything you like. Next, hit continue, and you want to choose a domain name. This only really matters if you're setting up like a home network or server, but otherwise you can just press continue here and don't have to fill it in at all. And here's where you want to set your passwords. On Linux, the root password is essentially like the admin password for the computer, so you want to make sure it's secure. And if you can help it, not the same password as your normal account. After that, hit continue, and then you'll be asked for a name for your new user account. I'm going to do Adam, because that's my name, and hit enter or continue. And then the username for your account too, 
Again, I'm a user for Adam. Next, you want to choose a password for your new user. Like I said, try and make it different from the root password. And then hit continue. And it will start doing some more loading and detecting disks and stuff like that. After that's finished, the partition disks menu will come up and you'll want to click on menu. After at the screen, you'll see the free space we freed up in Windows earlier. Click on this and click continue. Click on create new partition and click continue. Here we're going to, we want to specify the size of the partition. This is where we're going to create our swap area, which is essentially um, something which is the same size or bigger than the RAM, which your computer can use as backup memory if you run out of space in your RAM, which is actually stored in your hard drive or your SSD. So the recommended amount is either the same amount as your RAM or 1.5 to 2 times more. Because we've got 3 gigs of RAM in this computer, I'm going to type in 3 GB, 3 gigabytes, and hit continue. And you can set this as primal or logical, although I'm just going to leave it as logical but it doesn't really matter. Choose where you want the partition to be physically on the drive. I'm going to leave it as uh, beginning. And then it's, we want to choose use as, double click on it and change it to swap area, hit continue, and then leave all those default and then click on done setting up the partition and click continue again. Next, click on the free space again and click continue. Create new partition, continue. And here you can just leave it as default to use up all the rest of the space, click continue. I'm going to create this as a primary uh, partition, hit continue. I'm going to leave it as use as ext4 journaling file system and leave the mount point as forward slash and then click on done setting on the partition and continue. After we've done this, you want to click down here, finish partitioning and write changes to disk and hit continue. Yes, and continue again. This will finish partitioning the drive so we can install Linux onto it. And then the install will begin and it's simply a case of waiting for it to finish. After finishes loading, it will ask if you have another CD or DVD um, unless you created multiple bootable USB sticks or multiple CDs or DVDs, just click no and click continue because it really won't make a difference. This is the point where it will ask you if you want to use a network mirror or, or not to download the extra packages which aren't on the CD or DVD. If you decide to go for a smaller installation image, it will either say you have to use this or I highly recommend that you click yes here. But because we're using a DVD image in this example, I'm going to click no and click continue just so it's quicker. And then it's simply a case of waiting for it to install the software and waiting again. After that finishes, you'll be greeted with this screen, which asks you what uh, desktop environment you want to use, and then a bunch of other system utilities and stuff like that. So if you've got a slower computer, I recommend going for LXDE, which is also the one which I prefer to use. But um, some other common ones are Cinnamon, Mate, uh, Gnome's a very po popular one. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go with the one I most, frequent, I most frequently use, which is LXDE. Um, web server, if you want to host a web server, print server, if you want to host a print server, SSH server, if you want to be able to SSH in remotely, and then I recommend keeping standard system utilities on. And after you've made those choices, simply go and click continue, and it will install all of the packages again. All right, after that finishes, it will say install the grub bootloader on the hard disk, click yes, and click continue, and then click the hard drive you're using, which is uh, dev SDA for us, and hit continue again, and it will install grub. And then the installation will start to finish by setting the hardware clock and stuff like that. And after it finishes, it will say finish the installation, installation complete. And this is simply a case of um, removing the USB stick or CD or DVD from your computer and then hitting continue to reboot it. After a hit reboot, uh, it will boot us into the Grub bootloader where we can select a boot from either Windows 10 or 2 Debian. After computer reboots, you will be greeted by the Grub bootloader and you can use the up and down arrow keys to select um, what you want to boot into. So you can boot into Linux or the Windows um, partition there, but I'm going to boot into Linux and show you that it's all working. All right, after Debian loads, you have to enter your username and password, which you uh, decided in the installation. So mine was Adam, and then you enter your password and hit login. And then it will say, do you want to save your history and copy data into a text file? I'm going to hit no. And there you are, you'll be booted into Debian 8.6, and then you can use it and set it up just as you would like any other Linux operating system. Alright, so thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.